In this video, we are going to look at proportion. You will find this on page 36 in the Namibia Ordinary Level Mathematics textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. Proportion, and this is the symbol. Okay, it's almost like an 8 on the side, but it has an open end. So two ratios or fractions are equal. Say for example, 1 to 3 is equal to 2 to 6. But you get two types of proportion. You get direct proportion and you get inverse or indirect proportion. Now let's look at an example of direct proportion. It's for example buying apples. Say the Cancer Association is selling apples. So 5 apples will cost me $10. 15 apples will cost me $30. Let's take the marker. So, as one quantity increases, the other also increases, but also, as one quantity decreases, the other also decreases. So basically, if one goes up, the other one goes up. If one goes down, the other one goes down. So the more apples cost more money. But this is different with indirect proportion. Indirect proportion is, for example, painting a school. It's more like a curved graph. So it's a hyperbole, which we will look later in chapter 6. So it's for example, and let's just look. If you take 10 workers to paint Paris Secondary School, it will take you two days. If you reduce the workers and you only take four workers to paint the school, it will only, it will, the, the days will increase and it increased to five days. So as the workers decrease, the days increase. So it has opposite movements. So more workers take less time to finish the job. So as one in quantity increases, the other decreases. So if you see that this is the situation, then it's inverse or indirect proportion. Okay. Direct proportion. Direct proportion. This is what was direct proportion. You have equivalent fractions. When you divide each pair, you get the same answer. If you divide there by 2 by 2, you will also get 1, 2, 3. But let's look at an example. A machine labels 500 bottles in 4 minutes. How many bottles will it label in 1 hour? So, you, you know, the more time, the more bottles. So it's going to be direct proportion. So always I like to do it, bottles time, 500 bottles in 4 minutes, make your units the same. So 1 hour, what will 1 hour be? That will be 60 minutes. So X, I don't know how many bottles, in 60 minutes. This is equal fractions. So I can cross multiply. So X times 4 is 4X. 500 times 60, it's 500 it's going to give me this, and then I just divide by 4, divide by 4, so it will label C open 700, no, 7,500. So 7,500 bottles will, were labeled in one hour. Okay, this is very basic. Uh, we will now come to more complicated ones, but just for now, I want you to stop the video. And I want you to do try now, 33, and I just want you to do number 2. So we are first focusing on direct proportion. I'm just going to move this up. And I'm going to move this up. Okay. And then I'm going to say this is number 2. Okay, so let's start. This is number 33. I just want to get my place here, 33, and then I'm going to start with the video. Here it is. Okay. For an area of 8 millimeters square, the amount of fertilizer required is 675 gram. Okay, so what is the two things? It's going to be meter square and it's going to be the and it's going to be gram. So if it's 18 meters square. It's going to be 675 gram. Now, how much is needed to fertilize 11 meters square? So, if I'm going to go for 11, then I'm just going to do it like this, and I put an X there. Now, remember, make it a fraction, put it equal, and after I did that, I can cross 
multiply. So I'm going to get now 18x and at 6, 7, 5, multiply 11. Okay, so if I'm doing that, I'm, I'm just going to say I divide by 18, divide by 18, and my answer of x is going to be 412.5 gram. So therefore, how much is needed to, to um, so um, you will need something like this, you will need 412.5 gram to fertilize 11 meters square, something like that. Okay, that was number A. But now, a lot of times they do this. They continue with this statement, and I want you to do number B. But it's exactly the same. The, the beginning is exactly the same. And, and I think I want to use the, the same color to show you that. So if it's going to be meter square, and it's going to be gram, then uh, start with the top statement again. That's 18 meters squared, and that's 675 gram. Okay, I don't have to put the gram. And then what area will this fertilizer? So, so now they give you the gram, so it's 862.5, and this is x. And again, this is a fraction, this equal. So cross multiply. So it's going to be in this case 675x is going to be 18 times 862.5 and I divide 675 and I divide 675. I'm just going to move it up. Oh, let's just get the pen again. And my final answer is going to be, um, let's just write it. 23 meters square. So what area? So um, area of 23, oh that 3 is not nice, 23 meters square. Okay, and that's direct proportion. The nice thing about this proportion, you use it in a lot of things and later on, especially um, in statistics in pie charts, sometimes you use this method to find it, I think we also did it in, in percentage, you can also do direct proportion, and reverse percentage, so this is a very useful method. Okay. Um, I'm going to continue with direct proportion now, and I'm going to say, which is more about like the ordinary level of doing this, is asking you to write down an equation. Okay, and in this case, um, although I want you to do both methods, I think I'm just going to let you do the method, the ordinary level method. Okay, let's just get our pen and pencil correct. So you can do it on the normal method, but especially if they ask you the equation, then rather focus on on method two. This is the preferred method for this type of question. So the height h centimeter reaches by an object thrown vertical upwards is proportional. Now if they say proportional, they mean direct proportional. Otherwise they will say inverse or indirect. To the square of the speed. Okay. V meters per second. With which is thrown. When V is 4, H is 80. Find the equation connecting H and V. Now start always, as I said, you can do it with the old method, but start, if I want you to focus on this method now, start by saying H, there's A, is proportional, and don't forget, I just want to underline that, to the square of the speed. Okay, so that's why it's V squared. Now, in order to make that, and I must make it a bit bigger, but you really can focus there. In order to make, to get rid of that proportion sign and to make it equal, you must put in the constant. So now I'm going to find the constant. How do I find the constant? I just want to move a little bit down by using these two values. So in the place of H, I put 80. In the place of V, I put 4. 
and then I just calculate the value of k. And then I take basically, did you see? I take that equation and then I just substitute in the place of k5 and this is my equation. And that find an equation, that is the equation they want. Okay, and now in the next question, they will ask you to use the equation. So find the height reached by the object thrown upwards at 6 meters per second. So write down the equation, and now in the place of V, you put 6. And then you just calculate it, and you get your answer. Okay. I want you to stop the video, and I want you to do, try now 34 number one and in this case you can do it only on the second method if you are doing it more practice you can try the first method and you also see in the teacher's guide the first method but for now for the video we will just do it on the second method okay so in the electrical circuit let's just get that position again Okay. In an electrical circuit, the current A amperes is directly proportional, nice, they say direct, to the square root of the power, P watts. Okay, so start with your first, first statement. So they say E, I, or in a I amperes, is proportional to the square root of the power. Okay, now if you do it like this, then basically I'm just going to do, say for example, so if I want to make it an equal sign, I just put in the K. Okay, now I substitute the values. When I is 4, P is 100. So, okay, I forgot to substitute that one. So I is 4, P is 100. So if I simplify that, I get 4 equals K times 10. So divide 10, divide 10. So therefore, K is equal to 0 0.4. And if I do that, I'm going to say now I is equal, put in K, 0 0.4, that's where I put it, and then P. Okay, and now, so this is find an equation, that's my equation, and in number B use the equation, calculate I when P is 144, so first write down your equation, um, and then in the place of P, put 144, and that will give me 0 0.4 times 12 and that will give me a final answer of 4.8 amperes. Okay, and as easy as that. So first always find your equation and then after that just use your equation.